Now let's look closer uh, how the um, mitochondrial ATP synthase converts the uh, electrochemical gradient uh, and proton pumping across electrochemical gradient uh, to uh, the synthesis of ATP. The uh, mitochondrial ATP synthase complex uh, also is known as uh, F-type ATP synthase and also is no, known as complex 5. It, it has uh, overall a mushroom shape which is uh, anchored in the inner mitochondrial membrane uh, by its uh, FO portion or uh, uh, oligomycin sensitive portion and has is protruding into mitochondrial matrix with its uh, soluble F1 ATPase portion. Each of these portions, FO membrane anchoring portion and F1 soluble portions, uh, are consisting of uh, several polypeptide chains. The polypeptide chains of F1 portions are referred as, uh, to as by Greek, Greek alphabetic letters and the um, FO portions are referred to as by the Latin alphabetic letters. Uh, so let's look closer into, into anatomy of the uh, uh, um, ATP synthase complex and then uh, look into uh, how its conformational changes are coupled to ATP synthase and how they are driven by the uh, release of the proton gradient. Uh, F1 subunit uh, as mentioned, consists of several polypeptide chains. Uh, they are referred to as uh, alpha and beta subunits, and these subunits are shown here in, in deep purple. And in fact, the alpha beta subunits in three dimensional form, this kind of ring shaped structure, is consistent, each consists of three alpha beta dimers, forming overall this ring kind of shaped assembly. This ring shaped assembly is uh, bound to the uh, delta subunit of F1 uh, and in turn this delta subunit is bound in a non-covalent but tight fashion to the alpha helical uh, uh, B dimer of the F0 subunit of ATPS complex. So in total this um, circle of alpha beta subunits uh, uh, Delta subunit and B subunits are um, tightly coupled to, to, to one another and form this uh, stiff uh, structure when bound together. Uh, in turn, the uh, alpha helical beta subunits, uh, B subunits, sorry, are also non covalently but very tightly bound to this uh, A uh, transmembrane base of uh, uh, FO subunit. Thus, uh, all together forming this uh, uh, the stationary part of uh, the ATP synthase complex consists of this head part and the membrane an anchorage. Uh, in turn, the uh, C subunits of uh, FO form this kind of cylindrically shaped oligomeric structure sitting in the plane of the perpendicular to the plane of uh, the lipid membrane and this uh, cylindrical st structure uh, consists of um, uh, alpha helical C subunits which uh, can uh, vary uh, evolutionarily between different species uh, changing in um, number from uh, uh, approximately 8 to 15 in different species and each of these subunits carries the uh, proton channel which is activated when this uh, uh, cylinder C subunits are in contact with the A stationary subunit uh, and this uh, couples the release of protons through the channels in uh, the C subunit to the rotation of all these cylinders against A subunit. Uh, so this is how the uh, proton gradient is coupled to rotation of this uh, membrane cylinder of C subunits. In turn, the C subunits are uh, bound uh, non-covalently but tightly to epsilon and gamma subunits of the F1 part, while uh, the 
gamma and epsilon subunits can uh, free rotate uh, against this uh, deep purple alpha beta subunits. So um, altogether, when the proton gradient is released, the uh, cylinder uh, of C subunits together with uh, epsilon and gamma subunit would rotate uh, against this uh, uh, this alpha beta trimer of, of a fun subunit and this would cause the uh, rotation would cause the sequential uh, change change of the contacts between uh, the uh, uh, gamma shaft this gamma stretch on one hand and alpha beta subunits on the another on the other hand and this would result in sequential conformational changes of alpha and beta subunits such that it is coupled to the cycle of the catalyst of ATP synthesis so the energy which is released by uh, releasing protons uh, through the inner mitochondrial membrane would force the rotation of uh, this membrane cylinder together with this gamma epsilon shaft and the rotation of this shaft would force the changes in uh, the uh, alpha beta dimers of f1 subunit and in turn these changes would uh, empower the catalytic cycles of alpha, alpha beta subunits um, gener generating ATP from uh, ADP and organic phosphate and this is something which is referred to as a uh, uh, rotary based uh, catalysis model of uh, ATP synthase. And the question is, uh, are there any arguments towards that? One strong prediction of rotary-based catalysis is that the uh, generation of ATP by uh, ATP synthase is coupled to its rotation. If, for example, um, the uh, synthesis of uh, ATP is uh, produced by, let's say, left uh, rotation of uh, this uh, membrane portion of ATP synthase together with the, uh, the gamma shaft, then uh, uh, since this is a thermodynamic process, uh, if we would have uh, a lot of ATP and uh, very little uh, ATP substrates, and then this reaction could be uh, reverted backwards uh, um, according to the uh, the Le Chatelier mass action principle, so that if we would provide a lot of ATP and uh, no ADP, so then the system uh, must be able to uh, rotate backwards, catalyzing the ATP consumption and rotating in uh, opposite direction. And uh, this is something which was done in the classical experiments towards the of proof of uh, the rotary-based models by the uh, Yeshida et al. What they did is that they isolated um, ATP synthase and immobilized its um, uh, alpha, alpha beta uh, F1 part on a glass surface. Uh, as such, the uh, whole ATP synthase complex would be fixed on the glass surface and if uh, the uh, uh, ATP would be provided to the system and if indeed uh, this rotary based catalyst we would expect that ATP hydrolysis would uh, cause the uh, backwards rotation of the uh, shaft and uh, the uh, C cylinder of the FO subunit and what they did is that they uh, coupled by chemically the uh, one of the subunits of the uh, C cylinder to the fluorescent labeled actin filament. Uh, in this case, if we would have it on the cover slide and look at it on the microscope, on the fluorescent microscope, you, you should see this uh, filament and this filament should uh, start to rotate around. And uh, indeed, I mean, that's what they would see as soon as they would add ATP, they would start to see in the microscope that this rod of actin filament will start to uh, very quickly rotate counterclockwise. And uh, so uh, how the this rotation are coupled to ATP synthesis? As um, mentioned before, the central role is played by the uh, interplay between this uh, uh, three alphabeted dimers forming the um, 
this mushroom head part of ATP synthase complex and its position, this position uh, with respect to uh, gamma shaft, which, which is uh, uh, empowered by the rotation of C cylinder. Uh, so the uh, three dimeric subunits arranged in a circle could be present in the uh, three conformational stage, states, which is triggered again by the uh, position of the gamma shaft with respect to them and by the mutual interaction. Uh, the, in the first um, state, empty state, the um, beta subunit, which harbors the uh, measured portion of catalytic site uh, harboring the substrate in the product is empty. Uh, next, uh, in next position, uh, the um, uh, alpha beta subunits are triggered to a uh, um, loose state where uh, they are able to uh, the beta were able beta subunits are able to, able to bind ADP ADP as a substrate and in third position the uh, beta subunit is bound to ATP. So uh, by rotating the shaft against uh, this uh, uh, this triple dimer, each of the uh, alpha beta subunits is sequentially switched between the empty loose and tight conformation thus are uh, 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 being empty first acquiring ADP substrate, catalyzing production of ATP and releasing uh, produced ATP and going back to empty states and uh, uh, so on and so forth. So um, how uh, this catalytic cycle, so cycle works, how are the, um, uh, what is the detail of ATP production by this, uh, through these conformational changes? The uh, catalytic details of ATP synthesis are Describe it by the uh, by change model, which we actually discussed to large extent in the previous slide. Uh, to be more specific, the uh, whole cycle of rotation of gamma shaft against this uh, trimer of alpha beta subunit is uh, requiring the pumping of um, translocation of in total of nine protons uh, from one side to, to the other. And this uh, could be easily understood uh, considering the number of uh, C monomers in the C cylinder. Each C monomer harbors one uh, channel, so the whole cycle of uh, rotation of uh, C cylinder would require the number of protons approximately equal to the number of uh, C subunits. And in the case of um, East and our uh, protein uh, uh, ATP synthase the number of subunits is uh, 10 so it is approximately uh, 10 9 protons uh, are required for the whole cycle uh, and as such it is uh, easy to deduce that each of these uh, uh, conformational click between the uh, 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 transitions of uh, alpha beta subunits from one state to another is requiring in total approximately three pumping of uh, three protons from uh, positive side to negative side. Uh, and uh, if we look at the catalytic cycle it, of alpha beta subunits, it is actually uh, represent a very uh, unusual enzymatic cycle. Uh, unlike uh, in the classical example of enzymes where um, the uh, maximum of uh, free energy uh, usually corresponds to the transition state between the substrate and the product. In the case of um, ATP synthase, the uh, uh, transition uh, state between the um, substrate and the product is uh, by far not uh, the uh, maximum uh, free energy point of the reaction uh, and uh, instead the maximum free energy point is reached during the process of uh, uh, product release. So the uh, 
thermodynamic reason for that is that uh, when switching between the uh, uh, loose state and uh, tight state between uh, substrate ADP bone state and uh, product ADP bone state, the uh, affinity of uh, alpha beta alpha beta subunits to ATP ADP versus ADP uh, is drastically changes, while uh, the affinity to uh, ADP is uh, approximately 10 in the power of minus 5 molars and the affinity to ADP is uh, 10 in the power of minus 12 molars so it is much much higher affinity so um, the uh, peculiarity of um, the uh, this uh, catalytic step catalysis performed by alpha beta dimers is, is, is such that the uh, huge amount of free energy which uh, has to be pumped to uh, produce uh, 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 the phosphoanhydride linking gamma phosphate in ATP is uh, generated by the free energy released by uh, uh, huge uh, huge energy released sorry, by, by conformational switch when uh, uh, alpha beta subunits catalyze the uh, formation of ATP from ADP. And this uh, free energy release compensates for the um, uh, free energy required to uh, uh, bind together inorganic phosphate and ADP. Uh, and as a result, uh, it's an interesting fact that uh, if one would measure the uh, free energy change uh, uh, required for this uh, catalysis from uh, ADP to ATP uh, and vice versa. On the surface of the enzyme, considering only uh, ATP and ADP bound to the enzyme, so this uh, free energy change will be around zero. So the, the, um, on the surface of the enzyme, the, the uh, reaction of uh, uh, ATP generation will be almost entirely reversible. Uh, and again, the moral is that uh, in the cycle of ATP catalysis, the, ener the uh, uh, step where energy is pumped into the system is during the substrate release, and the substrate release is uh, uh, something which is uh, 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 the substrate release is the step where the uh, energy uh, produced by proton pumping is. Uh, Imputed in the, in the, into the uh, catalytic machinery to uh, uh, and 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 harnessed to uh, release uh, this uh, final product from ATP synthase, uh, switching the alpha beta subunit from the tight state to the empty state.